Hello, and welcome to another virtual session with Mopa Foundation. Today, we are going to be making drums out of Atta Fruits. First, we're going to need three mason jars. If you don't have a mason jar, we'll explain some substitutions at the end. And add a fruit is going to be the brains of this whole operation. Next, we're going to grab a micro USB cable. This guy looks kind of like a trapezoid and is very particular about how you plug it in. A battery pack isn't strictly necessary, but if you want some extra juice and extra volume, go ahead and grab one. We are going to use five alligator clips to connect everything together. I like having them be multicolored, but if that's not an option, that is okay. For drumsticks, I've used two kebab skewers that I took from my kitchen and cut in half. You can always use your hands if you don't have these available. For each one of the mason jars, we are going to clip the alligator part to the ring portion of the lid. We're going to do this once for each thing, and you can see that I'm tugging here to make sure that the lid is secure. Next, we're gonna put the stick part into one of the clips. You can see here that the clip part extends past where the stick is because that's what's actually going to be making contact with the lids later on. Now comes wiring up our drums. We're going to want to use the little circles labeled A3, A2, and A1. So here I've got the green clip going into A3, the red clip going into A2, and the white clip going into A1. Finally, we're going to clip the other side of the cable that is connected to our sticks, both to the GND, or the ground ports of our chip. Like I mentioned earlier, the battery pack is optional, but here we're going to connect it anyway. All right, let's get started. So if you go to this website, makecode.adafruit.com slash pound sign or hashtag, depending on who you ask, editor, we see our lovely programming interface. It's got a blank screen that we're gonna fill up. 
all of our options in the middle and then a simulated version of our chip to the left. So the first thing we're going to do is create variables to represent our drum set. So we have a crash symbol. We have a snare drum. Oops, snare drum. And we have a kick drum. OK, next we're going to want to go into our loops. The forever loop is going to be always running in our code and our unstart loop will only run once at the very, very beginning. We're going to set this guy off to the side for now and come back to it later, but we will need it. So now that we've defined our variables and have somewhere to put them, let's drag one of these guys out. And we are going to want to read the pin that we put it into. We want to go to our analog read pin. And we're going to do this for each one of our drums. And don't worry about the naming. We're going to change that in a hot second. So first things first, the kick drum is connected to a three. The crash symbol is connected to a two, which means our snare is connected to a one. What this will do is every single time we go through this loop, at the very beginning, it's going to read whatever we have connected. So here we have a three. It's going to read this pin, which is acting as our kick drum and is going to assign it to the variable kick. This way, the computer isn't just guessing at what's happening. It's always updating its information. Once we've read in all of our values, we have to think about what we're going to do with them. So we're going to go into logic. We're going to drag the if and put it underneath these three salmon colored things. If true isn't going to work for us, we have to have some sort of condition. So we're going to go back into logic and grab the number less than number thing. Drag this guy inside and you can tell that I'm going to drop it inside because it gets highlighted in yellow as well. And the block stretches out for you to be able to drop it in there. This is very important. If you, for whatever reason, kind of miss, you can tell that the block isn't connected anywhere because our lovely editor kind of hashes it out. So let's get this guy in here. And we want to know what we're comparing. So in the same order that we did these guys, let's go ahead and do our if loops. Starting with the kick drum. So if you guys looked at our previous workshops, we kind of went into what analog means, but I'm going to say it here just so that you guys also know. So what does analog mean? We have a couple of examples here. Let's start with maybe the most common one in the middle. When you want to turn on a speaker, there is a single switch. It's either on or it's off. But if you want to turn the volume up or down on the speaker, on or off isn't good enough. Sometimes you want to listen to your music softly. Sometimes you want to listen to it super loudly because there's a bunch of people around. Digital is simply on or off, whereas analog has all of these options, volume all the way down to volume all the way up. You might also hear analog clocks and digital clocks. Digital clock will show you exactly what time it is, whereas the analog clock has all of these numbers and all of these options and you have to interpret what the hands are doing to figure out what time it is. And lastly, to be a little bit more technical, digital signals are either high or low. There's nothing in between. You get all of these straight lines at any particular moment in time. It's either up here or it's down there. There's nothing in between. Analog, on the other hand, has all of these values that are possible, just like you had all of the values possible for volume. Right now, 
we are going to have a magic number here, and that magic number is going to be 60. This means that when we touch our drums and complete the circuit, then right now I think the number is going to be something less than 60. It's going to start high, and when we touch it, it's going to go low. This number could change depending on whatever you're using. If it's aluminum foil, if it's a mason jar, if it's some type of fruit that you're touching, then this number could be different. Right now, we're going to set it for 60. And then, if this is true, if we are touching it, then we want to play a little bit of music. So because we have drums, playing longer tones might not be what you're looking for. So I am going to choose to play a very particular tone. I'm going to drag this, put it in here. Kick drums tend to be on the lower end of things. So let's say this guy. Now I'm going to duplicate this. So I don't have to drag everything out again, and I'm going to do it for the crash symbol. This number is going to stay the same, but the crash symbol tends to be more, more of a high pitched sound. It's a little bit more jarring. So let's say, let's say the highest sound we can possibly make. That's what we're going to do. Duplicate one more time for our snare drum. Again, this number stays the same. But this time, hmm, we've gone low for one of them, high for the other. Let's go somewhere in the middle. Let's say, you know what? Let's throw in a sharp here, just because we can. F sharp. Hmm. D sharp. I like that tone better. So, let's go back over what we did. First things first, we created some variables and then we assigned them to constantly be updated. And then with those numbers, we compare them to our magic number. And if we are at this magic number or lower, then we're going to play a particular sound depending on what drum we hit. So that sounds good. Let's go into our start conditions. So if you're going to play the drums, let's go ahead and play it loudly. So looking for our volume, we're going to drag this to on start because we only have to set this once and turn it all the way up. Now, if you're in a closed space with a bunch of people, maybe don't turn it all the way up. But some of these low notes might be a little hard to hear. So we're going to set this all the way high. To help with our magic number, we are also going to go into pins. And we are going to pull all of our pins up. This means that our chip is constantly going to be putting high voltage, let's say 3.3 .3 volts, at each one of these pins. That'll make it harder for your drums to just randomly go off. Because if we do this, then this number will for sure only be hit when we're touching and grounding and completing our circuits. And that's very important for making things sound just a little bit crisper. You can skip this step if you want to, but I found that it helps me a lot to filter out some of the unnecessary noise. And again, just like we did everything else, we're going to do this three times, once for each pin. OK, I think we're ready to rock and roll. So to go over everything one more time, at the very beginning, we're making sure that we're playing at the volume that we want. We're making sure that our pins are pulled up. Again, that means that the chip is constantly sending high voltage to them. And this is because we only want to meet this condition if we are touching our drums. Drums are no good if they just play randomly. Now, we are constantly going through all of this code. First things first, 
we update our information in the variables for every single one of our drums. And then with that updated information, we're going to compare them to our magic number and then play the note. Now, you're going to want to rename, if you haven't already, what your project is. And then we are going to try to download it. This is where things can get a little bit tricky. Thankfully, the website has these lovely graphics here for us. If you haven't already plugged in your device, please take time to do that now. And then you're going to find the reset button. There's two big buttons. You're going to press the one in the middle. Sometimes you have to double click it, but basically you're looking for the lights to turn red. And then a little bit after that, they're going to turn green. If you've clicked your button once and it didn't turn red, then green, try quickly double tapping it. Once you've double tapped it, you should also see this window pop up. See play boot, that is what our computer calls our chip. So over here, you can see that we've downloaded a file. So to get there, we're going to want to open up a new window, go to our downloads. Let's drag this over here so you guys can see better. And here is our file that we just downloaded. We're going to click and drag this guy over to where it says copy to C play boot D. Once we do that, you, sh you should see the lights turn off on your chip. That means that the firmware was downloaded, our chip is running our program, and we're good to go. So now you can close both of these windows, as well as our lovely little Al graphic from MakeCode. Now let's see this thing in action. A ball of aluminum foil or even an orange can sub for a mason jar. And again, if you don't have any sticks, you can always use your hand. Thanks for checking out this video. If you want to engage with us more, here are our Instagram and website links. Lastly, let us know what you thought by going to this link and giving us some honest and hopefully positive feedback.